There was so much security, they had to put covers over the cameras on our phones. We're back from our road trip. I'm here with my production crew, these wonderful people. I've been saying that I care about renewable energy and the environment, and I want a sustainable future, but how do you show that you care about something? Step number one is you learn about it. And I've been putting that off because it's so daunting to learn about all of renewable energy. But then Toyota came along and they offered to lend us a Mirai, the new 2021. They, they just gave me the keys. It smells new. I just want to drive it. I was hesitant because I didn't feel like I knew enough. Because if you're new here, hi, I'm Diana. I am an MIT physics alum and I don't usually do cars, although I did do that one video where you get out of the car and I taught you how to not shock yourself. But I was excited about the idea of getting to drive a hydrogen car. And I thought, yes, this is how I learn. Meeting experts, getting to ask all the questions. So we took the car on a two week road trip and made four episodes, each a deep dive on a subject in renewable energy that we didn't normally see featured. You'll have to wait and see whether we survived. <laughs> <laughs> so to start off the series, here's hydrogen fuel cells, because that's what powered our entire road trip. I had never thought about hydrogen fuel cell cars. I don't think most people even know they exist. No, honestly. I didn't. Did you guys know before the trip? Enthusiastic headshakes, no. <laughs> I knew already that it was an electric car, but for like the two months prior or longer working with Toyota, I thought it still burned the hydrogen. Yeah, that was a big misconception and kind of an embarrassing one, but. Ah, so there's like a whole display going on. Oh, look at the steering wheel. People are gonna watch this video and be like, she's never been in a car before. <laughs> <laughs> what does the H2O button do? <laughs> Is it peeing? <laughs> it said FCV system purge in progress. And then our first stop was the Toyota Technical Center. Often we'll come to a place and we'll film the entrance and the exit, but we couldn't do that here because there was so much security, they had to put covers over the cameras on our phones. We weren't allowed to film one side of the room. They're like, you can only face this way because everything else is incredibly confidential. It is the most secure location in North America for Toyota. It's by design that this is a black box, right? We are the North American hub for research and development for fuel cell electric technology. My dreams were actually to work on just really fast cars. I was a total gearhead. I was yeah. a mechanic. Just one of my first classes talked about at the time petroleum dependency. I never thought of like the negative impact that the industry I loved so much was having on the planet. So let's talk about how hydrogen fuel cells work. Let's open the hood if we yeah. can. they're producing electricity through this magical process. It is an all electric vehicle first and foremost. The difference between this electric vehicle and the battery electric vehicle that we hear so often is that instead of plugging it in and recharging it, we refill it with hydrogen, which takes about five minutes. So it's just a quicker refueling time. And then the energy is stored in the hydrogen instead of in the battery. A fuel cell works very similarly to a battery. So what happens when you push on the accelerator is you're opening a valve and allowing the hydrogen to come in from the tank and then oxygen's just coming in from the intake system, from the air. And it's oxygen in the air. <laughs> the, <Yeah>. I hope. <laughs> and the oxygen comes in on the cathode side, just like a battery, there's an anode and a cathode. Oxygen comes in on cathode, hydrogen comes in on the anode. Hydrogen in the atmosphere is, is never alone. It's always bonded to something. As soon as the hydrogen enters on the anode side, it hits a platinum catalyst and, and ionizes. Platinum yeah. catalyst. Yeah. What, is, what is that and what is that doing? Platinum is a, is a highly active noble metal. Really what it does is it just it activates the hydrogen and it causes the, the uh, proton and, and electron to break off. And it immediately tries to bond with the oxygen. It really wants to form water. And so what we've done in this you know, anode and cathode between the two, we have what's called a proton exchange membrane. It's a, a porous material that can hold the water molecules and the proton can kind of like hop across that, but the electron cannot get through that. It's non-conductive, so. So then what happens going through the proton exchange membrane? Just the proton travels across and then oh, meets up okay. with the oxygen. There's also a bit of a, of a platinum catalyst on that side okay. to also ionize to get, to get the oxygen excited too. So oh, the, two, okay. the two are all excited, right? Yeah, yeah. And they really want to, <laughs> they really want to form water, right? So the electron's stuck on the other side and it's like, I really want to get to the oxygen. Um, well, we've provided a conductive path around the membrane. And so the electron finds that, it travels around the membrane, meets up with the oxygen and with the 
proton, it forms water and goes out the tailpipe. What happens when you have that reaction happening quick enough, you get a lot of electrons flowing around that path, that creates an electric current, that then goes to the electric motor, and then that's what actually drives the vehicle. So yeah, that's the cool part to me, which is that you're just bringing in the hydrogen, touching the platinum, and that chemical reaction happening there is what splits apart the electron from the hydrogen. And that's all you need, flowing electrons, and that is electricity. That's it. That is a fuel cell. And I don't know if I made this clear. This is an electric car. There's battery electric and there's fuel cell electric. But that's why when you're driving down the road, you know, you can put your hand under the, the exhaust of the Mirai and actually feel the water. Whereas an internal combustion engine vehicle, you would never touch the exhaust, right? It's super hot. We finally figured out what the H2O button was, which was you press it and it has this compressed air that just blows through and blows all the water out of the fuel cell stacks. A question from our Patreons on Patreon is how is the hydrogen stored? Inside the car, the hydrogen is stored as a compressed gas. In preparing for this video, my dad was like, I heard that there's some storage problems with hydrogen because it's a tiny, tiny molecule. So it gets through some materials. So I was like, okay, dad, I'll ask about that. And I asked her, she was like, oh, there are regulations that we can't have that. So there's a very yeah. minute amount of hydrogen that can be leaked. Right. That's a global record regulation. For the tanks themselves, the tanks are made up of three layers. So the inner layer is like a plastic liner. Around that's carbon fiber and that's what gives the tank strength. And on top of that's glass fiber. And all of those are meant to, first of all, uh, contain the hydrogen, right? Oh so the hydrogen can't just like leak out of the tank. Yeah. You can leave yeah. it in a garage for its entire life and you'll still have a full tank. To wrap up this section, I thought it was so fun hearing Jackie talking about how the car works and how it was all designed, how they made it. Yeah. And it probably looks way different than when you were working on prototype pieces of it. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> there was a lot more zip ties and duct tapes and yeah. actually our, our windshield washer fluid came in a plastic baggie that we just kind of schlepped on there. Oh. You're, you're, you're going to see how the sausage is made. So that brings us to the next point, which is donuts how they test this car is really pretty aggressive I and mean, it does include things like you know we we use a saw and cut into the tank and then we cycle pressure depressurize pressure depressurize to make sure that that one flaw doesn't become a weak point in the tank how do you test the fuel cell stacks and the storage of the hydrogen the hydrogen tanks we set it on a bonfire and you know at like 800 degrees c flames right and ensure that the tank doesn't reach a pressure that causes it to rupture we drop it you know we actually have a crane and we'll bring it up drop it. It didn't immediately make sense to me, but I remember us talking about why they pierce it with armor rounds. They're so strong that actually to get through one wall of the tank when it's pressurized requires a armor piercing round that we can actually only get in the U.S. Okay. Thank you, U.S. military, right? And the reason that they had to pierce it with the armor piercing round was because all these extreme crash tests, they could never puncture the tank. We say it's like, you know, if you have like a soda can and you put like a pebble in it and like a rock in it, you crush it, that yeah. that rock is going to be still in the soda can. That's yeah. like what these are in a crash test. All right, moving on. What is it like driving a hydrogen car? What was the experience like? Get in here and you're driving a car powered by hydrogen. I had never driven an electric car before. So that was, I think, the significant experience of actually driving it is you hear that whir. The quietness of the fuel cell itself is when you're sitting in a light or something. If you have a passenger, you literally can converse with them. I mean, it was great. I had been driving a 2010 Prius. It was an upgrade. I had to look up reviews of cars because I was like, yeah, it turns really well, which I guess they call handling. Some car fanatic is just like, why didn't they give me the key? <laughs> so I asked Jackie what she thought because she actually raced cars on like tracks and stuff. Once you drive an electric motor and it's silent and there's no shifting and it's continuous torque, you're like, why is conventional vehicle still a thing? The <laughs> thing that sticks with me the most about driving a hydrogen car that's the most different from driving a gas powered car is how much you have to plan around refueling plan around where your hydrogen stations are and how far you're going. Because sometimes the stations run out, sometimes there's an issue with the hardware or something. There's a site that you can go to, the California Fuel Cell Partnership, and it tells you where all the refuel stations are and the status of them. This is so cool. Shall we pressurize this tank? 
it makes it easier that you've got the fuel credit. Everyone that has bought a hydrogen car so far has gotten a $15,000 fuel credit because the price of hydrogen is still pretty high relative to the same energy density of gas. I don't know how to better say that. I talked to three different drivers, but what struck me was that, that they all felt like nerdy about it. I wasn't yeah. sure if you could drive it to Palm Springs, but I'm kind of a nerd and I like doing math before I drive somewhere. <laughs> so that part of it's really fun, but I really hope that they get a, a station in Palm Springs. Mm. I had a little bit of a hard time yeah. the first couple of times I learned how to refuel. Yeah. So now it's just second nature to me. Thank goodness someone's here to help me and I'm not left to my own devices. We did get to a station one night that didn't have any fuel. Going back to my app, so we're at the Kikembo one. The station's low on fuel. See, there we go, offline. It was refueled by the next morning. Ooh, that is cold. The other thing that happened is that the nozzle froze to the receptacle. Aha. Oh when the gas is coming out, it's decreasing in pressure, so it gets cold in that nozzle. It freezes the receptacle. One of the biggest questions I had was, why is Toyota doing this? Everyone wants to know, there's battery electric vehicles out there. Why is Toyota working on fuel cell electric vehicles? We're gonna very much get into that in the next video. People are paying attention right now. A lot of people wanna see us turning to this all electric, we want all electric vehicles because we wanna bring the emissions down to zero. So people are like, well, why fuel cells if you've already got batteries. I wondered that too. You know, even here in LA, we have a huge health issue around places like the port of Los Angeles, ports of Long Beach, where, you know, higher rates of asthma, all these things that are attributed to poor air quality. The electrified portfolio is part of our environmental challenge 2050, just to try to really reduce our negative impact on the environment. The, the target is a 90% reduction in CO2 emissions by 2050, and the only way to get there is through electrification. That's why I drive on me right now, because I'm a proponent of all electrified powertrains, but I think that we can't get there with battery electrics alone. I'm so curious about the competition between automakers, and so I asked what that's been like working on this technology together. We don't talk about anything, we don't share anything. All of our vehicles, our prototypes are camouflaged. Normally in the automotive industry, it's very competitive. In the hydrogen and fuel cell space, it's pretty different yeah. because we can't do it alone. You know, when it comes to the development of all the regulations and the codes and standards, which isn't really like the sexy engineering, but it's critical. Every nozzle can hook onto every receptacle of every fuel cell vehicle because we sat in a room with you know, with Daimler, with GM, with Ford, with Honda, with Hyundai. We were there. And yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, we all sat around a table and, and all agreed on a standard. There is still a lot of competition, yeah. but it's that shared mission and everybody kind of putting aside the competition for the greater good you know, at least yeah. for the things that matter. So Toyota has some pretty ambitious goals for lowering their emissions and also for matching up with some of the emission regulations of some of the US states, a lot of countries around the world. But their argument is that we cannot get there with battery electric vehicles alone. And the fact that you're a trailblazer, the fact that it's all sciencey. Oh yeah, you definitely feel like you're the cusp on what's next. I didn't feel like we're experiencing hydrogen. It felt like, no, we're experiencing this change in technology. I'm not a car person, but I drive a car every single day and I have to think about where to get gas and how much I'm emitting, where the energy is coming from. That's why a lot of people are turning to electric cars. Thank you so much to Toyota for giving us the car, the keys, for bringing us into the Techno Center, talking to Jackie. Yeah, leave some questions in the comments if you have them about fuel cells. I will hopefully be able to answer, maybe even by the next video. Bye, happy physicsing. Good job, guys. We made it back. Woo.